Gardonix is a USB 3 write blocker which allows any Windows based software tools to work with partially failed storage devices. Each kit includes the Gardonix device, USB cable, and power supply. The power supply is optional and only needs to be connected if the source drive has an unusually large power consumption. To install Gardonix, all we have to do is connect it to the PC, go to the download page, input the serial number, launch the executable, press install, and reboot. We'll begin by connecting a USB 3 flash drive to Gardonix. Basic source drive parameters are shown in the log. Write attempts can be logged as well, and after enabling the option, we can see Windows constantly trying to write to the drive to update various file system metadata. Without a write blocker, simply viewing the drive's contents in this manner would cause evidence to be permanently overwritten. If files are deleted, then they will still disappear. However, the changes are only stored in Windows Cache and do not ever reach the source drive. Reconnecting the drive shows that the files are still there. USB is a highly flexible interface, so with adapters, Gardonix can be used with almost any type of storage device, including SATA drives and NVMe SSDs. A key advantage over traditional write blockers is that Gardonix allows working with partially failed storage devices. If a storage device is working in an imperfect manner and has bad sectors or other intermittent issues, then it may occasionally run into a serious exception, causing Windows to drop the drive, hang, or otherwise interrupt the data acquisition process. In this example, we are connecting a damaged SATA drive directly to the PC using a USB drive bay and attempting to image it. Because this drive is damaged, we quickly run into bad sectors and imaging slows down substantially, taking 7 minutes to get through less than a megabyte. After several minutes of hanging without progress, Windows drops the drive. Any software will stop working as soon as this happens because the drive temporarily disappears in the system. This doesn't mean that the drive is unreadable. It was just taking too long to respond and had occasional errors, which is all it takes for Windows to drop it. Now we'll try imaging the same drive, but this time with the USB connection running through Gardonix. Gardonix hardware contains an ARM processor which separately maintains two USB connections, one to the PC and one to the source drive. If the connection between Gardonix and the source drive is interrupted for any reason, it is automatically re-established and the PC remains unaware of this interruption, so Windows does not have any reason to drop the drive. We run into the same slowdowns as before, but this time, Gardonix maintains a trouble-free USB connection, which allows imaging to proceed. In the control panel, the current speed and drive status are shown in real time. Failed read attempts are logged so we can see that the imaging process is slowing down because the drive is running into bad sectors. We can even physically disconnect the drive during imaging without the PC becoming aware of it. The imaging process seamlessly continues when the drive is reconnected as if nothing happened. At the end, the imaging report has correct information about the source drive, and all bad sectors are logged normally. If the drive we are working on is in very bad shape with thousands of bad sectors, then simply maintaining a stable connection is not enough to successfully image it. For example, we only imaged 3% of this drive after almost 17 hours, and the process is estimated to take another 20 days. The drive is highly unlikely to survive another 20 days of imaging, so in practical terms, such a case is impossible to handle with the standard Gardonix unit. This is where Gardonix Professional comes in. The first feature added by this upgrade is the ability to prevent Windows from mounting the drive's file system. If a drive has bad sectors within critical file system elements, then Windows will fail to mount it and lock up. Imaging is impossible to start, and the log shows Windows constantly trying to read the same bad sectors over and over again. If we disable file system mounting and reconnect the drive, then the endless loop is avoided and imaging can be started. 
By far the most important addition is the read timeout option, which is what allows Gardonix to work with highly degraded drives. When we start imaging the same drive which we fail to image with Gardonix standard, we can see red blocks in the sector map, which represent bad sectors. The imaging process stops for more than a minute every time we run into them, which is why it takes an unacceptably long time. Setting the read timeout to short causes Gardonix to reinitialize the drive whenever it gets stuck processing a read command for more than a second. This way, each bad sector takes only a couple of seconds to skip past, instead of tens of seconds or even minutes at a time. This also makes the drive much more likely to survive the imaging process without suffering a serious failure, because it's spending less time doing harmful internal read retries against bad sectors. Sectors which were skipped in this manner are marked with yellow in the sector map. This option does have a potential drawback. Because we are cutting off the drive's internal read retries at an earlier point, we are slightly reducing the chance of getting a successful read on bad sectors, so this option should only be enabled for drives which are impossible to work with otherwise. Another way to speed up processing of bad areas is to limit bad block read retries. Most software tools read data in blocks of sectors. Blocks which fail to read are then retried sector by sector to retrieve every good sector within every bad block. This is a good process in most cases, but if the drive has a large number of bad sectors, then it may take far too long to retry bad blocks in this manner. Gardonix allows for bad block retries to be stopped, which greatly speeds up processing of bad areas at the cost of some good sectors being left behind. All options which could potentially leave data behind are turned off by default and can be turned on at any point during imaging, as soon as it becomes apparent that the drive's condition is not good enough for the traditional imaging process to succeed. With a short read timeout, we were able to image the drive in only 4 hours instead of 20 days, and we left behind approximately 2,000 sectors or 1 megabyte of data. All sectors which failed to read or were skipped by any method will be shown as bad sectors in the log of your preferred imaging software. This concludes our Gardonix demo video. Thanks for watching.